When you got to hand it to Red Bull, I guess by now it's pretty obvious that they got it all down pat, but there they were, the world champions, not even running a new set in Q1, sitting out the second half of Q2, didn't need to go out to defend at all. And then in Q3, when it really mattered, two new sets of tyres on the first max, took his pole position on the second out there to defend nobody to defend from just Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll out there trying to improve their grid positions everybody else had basically by then given up or run out of tires so Red Bull go into the race not only from the pole from the front row with Sergio Perez backing up Max but also with more sets of new tires under their wing as well and it's worth bearing in mind as well that Red Bull go into the Bahrain Grand Prix owning the front row and as the only team to have done long runs on all three compounds. They ran the medium compound on Friday in FP1. They ran the hard tyre in FP3 uh, in, on Saturday in Bahrain. And then, of course, yesterday they did their long run on the soft tyre as well. So there is a fait accompli, a beautiful job by Red Bull and a beautiful job too by Max Verstappen. I guess the question everybody's asking is what happened to Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin? Well, they're there or thereabouts. They're still ahead of Mercedes, a little bit slower than Ferrari now. Ferrari doing a great recovery job overnight, particularly good lap from Charles Leclerc. But Aston's still right there, still a very, very quick car in the hands of Fernando Alonso. But when it came down to it, when it came down to that pressure lap in Q3, it was interesting to watch because Max was out first and did his time and it was on the board and then Fernando went out it was almost as if it was one lap qualifying in the old days of one lap qualifying and Fernando went out and the difference in body language between the two drivers was absolutely stark in my view Maxi's usual very supple self nothing about late braking or getting on the power early with Max it's all about managing the dynamic weights and that's what we saw today you notice it particularly going into the last corner in Bahrain there's a nice head on head on shot and you can see there the change in direction straight line and then of course they're going into the right hander and whenever Max was doing that it was just a seamless movement beautiful to watch early turn in slightly shorter corner there than Sergio Perez and it's, it's a relatively easy corner to shorten that one because it's that's what it kind of invites you to do but Fernando by contrast was was just Fernando Alonso everything was a jolt you noticed it particularly going into turn 11 just a jolt in the car before he went into the into the left hand and now all that is great that is Fernando Alonso that's the Fernando we've known for what is it 22 years in Formula One but when you're up against an extremely good car like the Red Bull and it's being driven by Max Verstappen who's doing everything perfectly in terms of as I say managing the dynamic weights Fernando needs to be able to deliver a little bit more than that it's a difference between if you like the Fernando in the McLaren in 2007 alongside Lewis Hamilton in the McLaren in 2007. And we saw it today absolutely in stark contrast, in my view. And we saw it also going into, we saw it going into one, particularly Fernando at the beginning of his lap. You could tell that the adrenaline was pumping and he braked just a fraction too late because Fernando is all about late braking, ran a little bit wide. Yes, he kept it all together and classic Fernando, beautiful hand and footwork to keep it together. And then through 9 and 10, I thought he was very abrupt through there. He was right on the edge. He didn't lock up the inside front because there's enough grip from the, from the soft tyres, a new set of softs. But in the race, for sure, after four or five laps, on a full load of fuel, if he's up there with Max, that is where Max will have him. That's where Fernando potentially is going to be at his most vulnerable, locking up an inside front, running a little bit wide out of 10, and then Max will be gone. And Max through there was, what can I say, it was Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, DNA through there. Just perfect in terms of positioning car through nine, that really, really quick kink, just on the edge of the marbles, giving himself perfect room to get the car stopped and get a lovely exit out of, out of 10. So it was just a magical lap from Max, I thought. A bit of a shame that nobody was out there pushing him any harder, really, because uh, it was it was just an easy day for him. He made it look easy, which, of course, is the epitome of the art. So Red Bull, absolutely superb. They've been reliable. They've done that mileage, as I say, on all three compounds. I think I like to think they were pushed into doing that run uh, uh, this morning or at lunchtime today in Bahrain uh, on the hard tyre because of the performance of Alex Albon on the hard yesterday, which I mentioned uh, in the long run analysis. Uh, and they did their stint on that. So when Fernando was out there going quickly on the soft tyre, as indeed were Mercedes and Ferrari, 
Max was nowhere. Max was on the hard tire uh, doing his runs, as was Sergio Perez. So it just shows the sort of diligence and, and homework that Red Bull have been doing uh, and are doing and continue to do in a really, really good car beneath them as well. So congratulations again to Max for yet another pole and for making it look, as I say, just making it look ridiculously easy. P2, Sergio Perez backed up Max really well throughout the weekend. Looked really, really strong, really consistent. If Max has any sort of drama tomorrow, then look to Sergio Perez to be able to take it away uh, from the opposition and uh, potentially bring home a win for Red Bull, doing a really, really good job as Max's wingman, which is what he's paid to do. Lots of talk about whether and what Daniel Ricciardo should be in that car. But to me, Sergio is quick enough to do the job and he's not quick enough to give Max any sort of problem. So really impressive performance from Sergio Perez as well, I thought. P3, Charles Leclerc looked pretty messy and scruffy even today at the beginning of qualifying. Both Ferraris very oddly out on medium tyres right at the beginning, presumably just wanted to check something on the car. And as it happened, that Q1 was then red flag because there was debris on the track. So they were able to get their act together and get out on soft. Uh, but even on the soft tyre, Charles didn't look that good in Q1, but in Q2, just superb. He finally put his head down, did one of those Charles Leclerc laps and ended up the back half of Q2 when Max and uh, Sergio, as I say, were in the garage at that point. But the back half of Q2, he was purple, he was quickest, and all of a sudden Ferrari could start to get excited about their weekend for the first time with Piero Lardi there, of course, watching as well. And he qualified third in the end. Good performance from Charles Leclerc. Shows that Ferrari are there or thereabouts, kind of where we expected them to be all winter. Certainly not a Red Bull beater at this point, unless Red Bull have a problem. But Ferrari put their heads down, put a good package together, and Charles Leclerc, as ever, put the lap together when it really mattered. And we saw that again today in Bahrain. Just superb also through turns nine and ten. Just brilliant to watch. I, I keep going on about it, but to watch guys like Max in a Red Bull and Charles in a Ferrari, you think, wow, I'm so glad those guys are in those cars. And Carlos Sainz in the other Ferrari qualified fourth. So that's two Red Bulls on the front row, two Ferraris on the second row. Good job by Carlos Sainz as well. And then behind the Ferraris, three drivers all did 30.3, but down to a thousandth of a second. It was Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin just ahead of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. A good recovery job by Mercedes overnight to get the car quick on, on an individual lap on the red tyre. Good job by George Russell, need to say that as well. George looked really strong and quick all day, right on the edge, as he always is. Absolutely razor thin margins that he leaves everywhere. How that'll stand up in the race to Lewis's consistency and Lewis's ability to be able to manage the car when, th when the variables come into play. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow, but if, if George gets in front of Lewis at the start, that'll be an interesting race to watch, that's for sure. I thought Espen Ocon did a very good job to qualify ninth, to get out of Q2, would you believe, because Pierre Gasly didn't even make it out of Q1 in the other Alpine. Uh, always an emotional driver, Pierre Gasly, to my mind. Yes, he has quite a lot of issues. He didn't get the balance of the car right, or they didn't get the balance right. But he is an emotional driver. When he's on it, incredibly quick. But when things start to get away from him, they compound themselves quite rapidly. And today we saw Esteban Ocon, icy cool, doing a very good job. And in effect, if you take Aston Martin out of it, quickest of the rest. But you'd have to say, really, Aston Martin, at the moment, based on pedigree, based on points scored in the World Championship, uh, are best of the rest. But Alpine and with Esteban Ocon close to them. Very good performance by Esteban. And Nico Hülkenberg, P10 in the Haas. Just fabulous. As I said yesterday, driving beautifully. Looked really good all day. Again, just got to say, where has he been all this time? I mean, it's such a shame that he hasn't been better rewarded over the years. But here he is. He's got his drive with Gene Haas. And good luck to Haas and good luck to Nico. Really good job upstaging Kevin Magnussen today. That is for sure. Got out of Q2 without any problem whatsoever. And uh, very, very quick under pressure. Typical Nico Hülkenberg. Not a good day for McLaren at all. Same engine, of course, as Aston Martin, but a much slower car. Nothing like the same aero efficiency as the Aston has around Bahrain. Lando Norris did a good job to get into Q2. Half a second quicker than his new teammate, Oscar Piastri. But all round, they'll be scratching their heads in Woking, wondering what has gone wrong with that car development over the winter. Pretty good job by Alfa Romeo to be 12th and 13th ahead of Yuki Tsunoda in the Alfa Tori. Uh, and then came Alex Albon in the Williams, who I said did a very good job yesterday with a full fuel load, did a good job to get into 
Q2. Had to feel a bit sorry for his teammate, Logan Sargent, who actually I thought looked very good in the car. Uh, I made the comment, uh, was it US Grand Prix last year, Austin, when he had a Friday, uh, that he had appeared to have quite long corners, certainly quite a late turn into most of them. And I was quite amused to chat to Rob Wilson the other day, saying that, oh, yeah, he's just done some days with Logan Sargent. I said, Rob, don't say anything. I'm just interested to know how long are his corner entries. And he said, oh, yeah, well, that's the big issue. Very, very long corners. But we got that sorted now. It's amazing how he responded. And much shorter corners, totally got it, totally understood. And he's really quick. So that's from the horse's mouth, as it were. That's from Rob. And I thought that showed through with Logan Sargent today. He looked really good in the car. Um, but look at this. 131.652 was his lap time. That wasn't good enough to get into Q2. And guess who bumped him? Lando Norris, who did 131.652, exactly the same time, uh, but did it slightly before Logan. So that's unlucky, isn't it? And to think now, Logan Sargent in the second Williams, as quick as Lando Norris in Q1 in Bahrain, I'd be pretty happy with that if I was him. And if I was a US fan, I'd be thinking, yeah, this guy's done us proud. He's done very, very well. So congratulations to him. Good job. So there we are. On paper now, it's a race, obviously, for Red Bull to lose. It looks to be another Max Verstappen class act with Sergio Perez right behind him. Ferrari might give him a little trouble, and it'll be really interesting to see how the George Russell Lewis Hamilton battle works out and what, what part Fernando Alonso is now going to play. I mean, I've been talking about Fernando's style on one lap under pressure. Fernando Alonso as a racing driver with all the variables out there, very hard to beat on a Sunday in the right car. And he's got a pretty good car now. So I think the big question tomorrow is how Fernando will use that Aston Martin as drivable as it is, as predictable as it is, and his ability obviously uh, to deal with all those variables that can come into play. It can be anything from wind to dust to sand in Bahrain, of course, the compounds as well, the tires to think about. Uh, so potentially, it's not a bad sort of race for Fernando Alonso to be in a pretty competitive car like the Aston Martin. I, don't, I doubt he'll be able to get near the Red Bulls now, but he might be up there with the Ferraris. And if so, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. See you then.